Hey guys, it's Randy Bird. How you doing? I thought I'd uh, I'd do a little video today to talk about the fires in Redding. Uh, unfortunately, I have quite a bit of experience for the Santa Rosa fires and some of the recovery efforts. I was involved in that very early on, uh, both from a construction um, aspect. I was on a panel for the construction, the rebuilding process and a real estate broker, and we ended up buying a, a property and selling it during that period of time, um, navigating that landscape. So I thought there might be some information that'd be valuable for me to share. Um, I broke it down into three sections, basically homeowners, and then construction piece, and then you'll see over here I have realtors, okay? So basically I thought I'd break it down into segments, and this is not uh, an advertiser type ploy, right? This is strictly just me trying to give you information. I'm actually gonna steer away from that piece of it completely. Anything that I say is my opinion. It's my opinion and my opinion only. Um, I don't need all the haters coming on telling me that, oh, it's not, you know, you don't have to dig down six inches, you don't have to do this, don't have to do that, it's just my opinion. What I've learned to help you. So if you feel compelled to share this with people that may have lost their homes or somebody that you know or you wanna put it on your Facebook, I authorize that. I'm, I'm allowing you to do that. I'm going to make it public. So basically, from a general contracting point, which I am, real estate bro broker and also a, a coach in the real estate industry, um, I, I think I might have some information that's going to be valuable for you. Okay, so number one on the homeowner side, again, I know there's going to be insurance people watching this. There's going to be homeowners. There's going to be realtors, contractors. I don't want. I don't want the hate. I just want the understanding that I'm trying to lend a little bit of information, a little bit of my experiences in the Santa Rosa fires that took over 6,000 homes. And I was pretty intimate in that process. So hopefully something in here helps one person. And if it does, then it's a win for me. All right. So that's, that's what this is about. So number one, insurance. The insurance piece is such a big piece. In Sonoma County, we saw, you know, um, people wanting to settle immediately and, and almost bragging about getting settlements in the first week or eight or 10 days on their properties. Well, the problem was construction was yet to work itself out. So we had all the, con all the, all the contractors started getting swamped and the prices started increasing. We started out about 230 bucks a square foot to rebuild in Sonoma County. It ended up over 300 bucks a square foot. <clears throat> 325 a square foot was pretty commonplace in Coffee Park. And then it backed back down to about 280 bucks a square foot is what it landed at in that particular neighborhood, three, 400 bucks a square foot up in Fountain Grove. So what we learned was there was a bell curve. You know, in the beginning, everybody got kind of crazy, overwhelmed, didn't know how to react. And then it kind of topped out and then it came back down and it's leveled out. And that's what I want to talk about. It's the leveling out. It took about nine months in Sonoma County. It was amazing. 6,000 homes plus or minus lost in Sonoma County. And in four months, there was not a piece of wood in the ground, not one foundation, nothing. It was unbelievable how slow that process took. They actually bragged about having one house now under construction after four months, which infuriated me, frankly. As a, as a building contractor, I think that should have been expedited a lot better, but they were learning. So there's a lot of learning that's been happening in, in Northern California that Reading will be, hopefully be able to take advantage of, both in the building departments and elsewise. But number one, insurance. Again, my opinion, I would not settle immediately. I would let things sort themselves out for a, a couple weeks, maybe even a month. And, um, you know, that piece is going to be such an integral piece of rebuilding. What the contractors are going to charge. Now, I'm not actively building in Redding, California, so I don't know the average going square footage cost like I did Sonoma County. But, you know, let's just say it's 200 bucks a square foot. It's likely going to spike in the beginning, and it's going to settle back down once everybody starts getting... Um, settled in. Now, I would find a contractor if you can. If you have somebody that you know in construction, lock them down because that's going to be the biggest uh, challenge as we progress. Uh, number two, file ASAP. Let your insurance companies know right away. We had lots of uh, people letting their insurance companies know right away, but it was so overwhelming that it sometimes took weeks for them to even get out there and get to talk to you. The personal inventory is a big deal. That's a separate policy. Now, I'm not an insurance guy. I'm a contractor, real estate broker, right? But, the, but what I learned through the town halls and all the different things was the personal inventory is a completely separate policy. And they were requiring people to give an itemized detail list. I mean, can you imagine just trying to itemize this office that I'm in? I mean, I got 
printers and copiers and lights and <laughs> there's no way to do an inventory of that without being purposeful about it. After the fact, when it's gone, you're trying to remember and you forget things like cameras in the drawers and jewelry. So the personal inventory in Sonoma County, what they did is the insurance commissioner actually put pressure on the companies to say, pay them their policy limits. Don't require them to come out with this massive inventory list. It's a burden that you don't need right now after losing your home. So try to do the best you can. If you have any videos or any pictures of any personal inventory, that's a big help with that. That's going to validate to the insurance companies what you had in the house that you're being legitimate about. But likely, your losses are going to be maybe even more than your personal inventory policy limits. So try for that policy limit. That is a separate policy to your homeowners. It's a separate amount, typically. Let your insurance people tell you what's going on. I know we got some great insurers in, in uh, Reading. I don't want to name names, but... We got some dynamite people up in that area. But um, do the best you can to itemize that and then think, look through pictures and whatever you can, the benefit to the cloud and all this stuff is your phones probably have a lot of pictures of your house, whether it's at Christmas or Thanksgiving. Look at the pictures and try to try to really particular look at the items in the house, dishes and things, you know, coat racks, different things that might jog your memory. Temp housing. Typically, insurance policies, from what I learned again in that experience, was they're one year. So you have, if your house burns down, you have one year for temporary housing to get that house rebuilt. When the government steps in and, and does a, an emergency declaration, or in the case of Shasta County and Sonoma County, a state of emergency, that extends that to two years. So that one becomes a two. So now you have two years of temporary housing in those kind of environments. Check with your insurance company. This is a great question to ask. Do I have extended coverage because of that? That is such a huge deal. So again, insurance, file right away, maybe wait to settle. Let the dust settle for a month or two would be what I would recommend to my, my own family. By the way, my family's in Reading. They're safe. Everything's okay. But um, my heart is heavy. My heart is extremely heavy. Um, that's been my home for a decade and a half. So Reading is, when I say home, I think of Reading. Um, so again... Temp housing is a big thing to look into. Rent control. This is going to be very significant. I've already heard stories which, man, it just pisses me off. I don't want to use foul language, but it pisses me off. Somebody's already offering their house up for six grand. We saw that in Sonoma County. It was rampant. It was unbelievable. People were offering houses that were 2500 bucks last week, five, six, seven, ten grand. There was a house that was 20000 a month because it would house multiple families. That's gouging. That's, that's crap. That's, you want to kick them but that's going to happen so be careful of that and um, look for the the county and the and the even the state to start putting rent controls they put rent controls in Sonoma County where they couldn't raise the rent over 10 percent over whatever it was prior to the fires you're going to see that um, price rebuilding we talked about that that's going to be a big deal let's just say Reading is approximately 200 bucks a square foot right 200 bucks a square foot to rebuild the house if that's today's prices you lose six to a thousand, six hundred to a thousand houses. That is going to increase ten, twenty, forty percent. It's it's going to happen. There's no question. Supply and demand. The contractors are are going to have to pay the subcontractors more. And as a general, we had about twenty million dollars worth of houses under contract to rebuild in the phase that I was in Selma County, trying to help with the building departments and the or the uh, builders exchange and some other buddies that were building. And the subs were jacking the prices up so much it affects us. It affects the general contractor. So our, our cost of goods sold may have been 180 bucks a square foot. Well, they went to like 280 bucks a square foot. That affects the end consumer being, unfortunately, the loss, the insured. So look for that to increase. So as soon as you can, if you can lock up a contractor and get them to give you a parameter of... Um, understanding of price that'd be great remember his materials and his labor is going to change there's no question about that absolutely zero question so just know that that's piece of this equation um selling the lot boy this is such a controversial issue in sonoma county we expected about an eight to ten percent lot turnover meaning people that don't want to rebuild underinsured was a major major issue hopefully that hopefully we learned as californians from the Sonoma County fires and people have upped their insurance after hearing all the stories in Sonoma County. That's literally my prayer is people adjusted for that. But I've already heard stories that they did not. So most of Sonoma County, we're talking, I don't want to quote numbers, but it was like 70% or more. It was an unbelievable number. We're underinsured. 
So insurance company, this is a true story. I bid a house. It was $318 a square foot to rebuild this house on a slope and a hillside and all this stuff. $318 a square foot. That was our bid to rebuild that house, competitive bid. Insurance company offered them $185,000 a square foot. You can see the gap there. It's, it's $130,000 gap approximately of, per square foot. Insurance would not budge. They just said, they said that's the going rate. That's what's allowed. We're going to see that again here. So a lot of people were forced to sell their lots and because they just couldn't afford to build. Well, I don't want to make this uh, uh, an issue with real estate agents and anything else. This is I want to be this uh, this to be as neutral as possible. But there's going to be time that you have to look at the financial implications of build, rebuilding versus selling. And and we expected about an 8% lot sale in Sonoma County when it happened, 8 to 10. It actually went over 25%. So imagine 25% of the lots coming on the market, flooding the market. They sold for a premium in the beginning, and then the prices just dropped because there were so many lots on the market. That's still the case. In the beginning, we had lots of investors offering multiple offers, over asking price, selling lots for 200 grand, like sight on scene, two day escrow. And then those lots went to 170, 160, 140, and then they stabilized, and now they're back coming back up about 170. And for instance, Coffee Park, 200 grand is still a reasonable deal. And that's in Sonoma County. I don't know the value of the lot prices in Reading, but you're going to see this trend, I promise you. Um, Clean up, that's such a big deal with, with the homeowners. That's going to be one of the first things to come up. And, and I'll probably do subsequent videos if it's valuable. People find this valuable and they share it and, and there's value here. Then I will, I will expand on this because this is a big deal. Natural disaster, um, you have um, emergency declarations. FEMA is likely going to come in and they're probably already calling independent contractors across the nation to bid and to come in and clean this up. When you have 600, is the last number I heard, to 1,000 homes that have lost, FEMA is going to come in and they're going to manage that cleanup effort. They're going to contract with the landfills and the dumps, and they're going to be a couple stages. Number one is the safety. So they're going to go in, number one, and they're going to get all the safety items, propane tanks, um, ha hazardous materials. Cars are going to be handled in a separate, kind of a separate issue from the cleanup. And then they're going to get the hazardous materials out first. Number one is to make sure it's hazard free. Reading's got a lot of older homes that may have asbestos and lead and different things. They're gonna come in and they're gonna evaluate those properties with or without your permission, by the way. That is gonna be evaluated by them. They're gonna evaluate those lots for hazardous materials. And then at that time, you're gonna be able to opt in or out for private or federal cleanup. Federal cleanup, the benefits in a nutshell, or they'll handle everything. They assume all the liability for cleaning up that lot, and they'll clean it up to their expectations and standards of clean. Meaning, they'll excavate down six or 12 inches of soil to make sure they get all the contaminated soil out of that site and off to a hazardous place. There's, we'll talk a little bit on the construction side, but there's a whole process for this. You can't just show up and, and, and rent a backhoe and clean up your own property. There's cleanup standards, there's, um, they want contractors to be involved in it. Hauling off the material is very you know, particular and very managed. You have to burrito wrap all the debris. You have to wet down the sites. There's a whole uh, navigation and mitigation plan that goes into cleaning up. I wish it was different, but it's not. That fire was so hot, I understand, there's probably not a lot of debris. Just like in Sonoma County, it was so hot, there was no wood debris. I had one cleanup that we couldn't have started a campfire after a fact. There was no combustible material. It burnt to the soil. But there's a lot of metal, a lot of particulates. Drywall doesn't burn. So what was surprising to me on those cleanups that we were on is you had sometimes a foot of drywall because drywall doesn't burn. So all the drywall in the house piles up on the ground. It gets wet. And, you know, we haven't had any rain yet, but it, it's nasty to work with, right? So all that's got to be managed. I'm going to move over a little bit here and talk about now the construction piece as a licensed general contractor and, um, you know, somebody that was involved in that process. I used to be the vice president of the Builders Exchange in Sonoma County. Unlicensed activity is the number one thing. We, in the Lake County Fire and the Sonoma County Fire, you just literally get, um, I don't even know the right word, but you get people that just come out of the woodwork to try and be general contractors, try to get all that work, you know. 
And unfortunately, unlicensed activity is extremely heavy. You'll start seeing immediately contractor state license board signs that say notice, caution, unlicensed activity, you know, it's a federal offense, all kinds of stuff. You'll see that's going on. Watch for that. Anytime you're talking to a contractor that you don't know personally, and you know, we talk about getting three bids and all that, that's great advice. And again, I'm not I'm not proposing any part of my services. I'm just talking about you trying to have a friend in the business that's going to help you navigate this landscape. References are hugely important. More importantly, make sure they've built houses before. I've already heard stories in Reading about people, you know, with landscaping licenses bidding to build houses. They just, they don't match, right? It's not a match. So try to find contractors. Uh, locals, great. Support our community. But the reality is with the magnitude, you're going to probably have to go out of the area. There's going to be out of area contractors from Sacramento and the Bay Area that are going to want to build. And price points, we'll have to see how that kind of works out. Lot clearing, we talked a little bit about it over here on the homeowner side. Lot clearing is such a valuable piece of this. Insurance, by the way, has a, a, a contingency in your insurance for cleaning the lot, basically. There's a couple contingencies most people don't know about. Number one is lot clearing, and it's typically about 5% of the overall insured. So let's just say you have insurance that's $500,000. I know that's high for Reading, but... Five hundred thousand dollars. You're gonna you're gonna have five percent of that that's available for cleaning the lot up. Okay, so that's about twenty five grand in this particular case. If you have two hundred fifty thousand dollars for the coverage or three hundred thousand dollars for coverage, you're about five percent is your cleanup amount. In Sonoma County, we have million million eight hundred thousand dollar houses. So that five percent was very significant. It was eighty ninety thousand dollars, and some of these houses were forty thousand or um, four thousand five thousand square feet. We needed it. So that's typically what's in your insurance for that. They will pay to have your lot cleaned up, but typically that number is kind of an automatic input. Um, on top of that, you're going to have permit upgrades. So say your house was built in 1980, and you have to upgrade it now to permits. Fire sprinklers mandatory in Sonoma County. Every house, 6,000 houses that burn, there was only like, I think it was less than 100 have fire sprinklers. They burnt to the ground anyway, but they're a mandatory requirement. That's a seven to $10,000 price adjustment you have to add right into it, right? Insurance has a separate policy. Again, talk to your insurance people that covers permit upgrades. Almost all the policies that we see as general contractors and real estate brokers include that. Hazmat cleanup, we talked about that. It's very specific. They're gonna wear... Um, Masks, white gear, all the equipment's covered. They're going to real wrap all the debris because this debris is littered with um, asbestos and hazardous materials, right? So that's going to be taken care of. If you do it yourself, you have to prevent or you have to propose a hazmat cleanup plan. And the plan, if, if you look at it, 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 you know, you have to label your property. You have to say where the house was. You have to say where you're going to put the debris. And then you have to talk about where you're going to offsite it how you're going to haul it, all these things come into play. So before you just say, I'm going to clean up my own property and save the 20 grand or whatever it may be, be cautious because you still have to get rid of that material. Every single load that goes to the landfill or the dumps of their choice when this comes out has to be documented. It's weighed, it's documented, it's a big deal. This is not load your trailer up on the weekend and buzz on down to the dump. It ain't happening, right? So good to know. Foundation removal. A lot of people don't understand this. The foundations are almost always ruined when the fire is this hot. Very rare that the foundations can be saved in, in entirety. So the foundation removal is, a, is an expense of this that's very significant. And it happens to be one of the most expensive parts of this rebuild. Right? So the foundation removal, they're going to come in and just, they've got literally 230 excavators, the big guys that are just going to grab and yank and pull out and rebar. But the, the concrete gets so hot, two, 3,000 degrees, that it just becomes brittle. It, it's fragile, falls apart. You could take a sledgehammer to it, and it sounds like you're hitting the side of a log. It's just thunk, thunk. You know, it's not that hard, crisp concrete because it got so hot, it's now ruined. So they're going to remove that, and they're going to have that hole where the foundation was. They're also going to over-excavate the property to get the contaminants out. So you may have... I don't want to make it sound worse than it is, but you may have a swimming pool where your house footprint used to be. 
because they're going to go down a foot under the slab if it's that kind of floor if it's a raised floor or so on same thing they're going to clear the debris they're going to remove all the foundations which are 18 inches deep and they're going to excavate that site and then they're going to overseed it to protect it that's again if fema does it or if a, a contractor does it they have to do this um mitigation to make sure that we have erosion control right so erosion control actually has to be part of this plan as well you have to circle your 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 property with erosion control measures and you have to overseed it and you have to put hay down all kinds of things but foundation removal is something important you if you found if you think your foundation's in good order then it's possible to have it tested and we we had a couple of those where we core drilled them tested them tested out good test out bad or portionately right this is a big one that people didn't understand, and, and I, I, I said this, and I was concerned about this, and then it happened. Driveways, walkways and stonework, bridges, uh, landscape stuff, you know, you have retaining walls, all that stuff. They're a little undiscreet when they come in. Now, I will, I will say that I was so impressed with FEMA, what they did in Sonoma County. They, they look like they surgically removed stuff on the property. And meaning that they had a block retaining wall, they moved within six inches of it and didn't tear it up. I expected, frankly, at that magnitude of 6,000 houses, excavators and, and, you know, not really caring about it. They were incredibly good, but that's a subcontractor. It could change. But driveways, typically, um, FEMA ordered that they pulled all the driveway aprons out because insurance didn't want to deal with it if, if they were good or bad. That's such a huge deal. We had some driveways that are 150 foot long. That's a $40,000 driveway that's in perfect shape. That is until the excavators ran over the top of it and broke it all up. But you can, as a homeowner, you can go out and identify areas you want to save, right? So you can say, hey, my driveway is this long driveway like this and the house was here. Only go from there in and leave all this intact. You could do that. You could even say, try to stay off the property. You're the homeowner. You get to control some of this, right? Walkways, stonework, retaining walls, all that stuff is in the scope of the construction process, right? So I'm going to move on to the real estate piece of it. And again, I'm going to be very clear. Um, I'm not trying to scare people. I'm not trying to have ulterior motives. I really want to just get this information out here. I'm really passionate about getting the information out there because there was so much learning curve in Sonoma County that we all learned. And, um, you know, we can live and learn by that. And I was just unfortunately involved in the Sonoma County cleanup efforts and intimate in that experience. And it was horrific. It was literally... Um, I was very inspired to go back, being that one, one of my community out of the Coast Guard was the Santa Rosa area. And we had just moved from Santa Rosa. And I wanted to go back there and help the efforts. And it was such a, such a disaster, um, no pun intended, that I couldn't deal with it. It was, the permit process was ridiculous. There were, um, you know, expedited, hopefully, permit processes. But it's, it's crazy what's going on. You know, one of the things that we're going to talk about is architectural requirements, and it's just nuts. So starting at the top, clients, right? Your real estate clients are going to probably call you and ask you, what am I going to do? Do I sell or do I rebuild? What, what's happening? You're going to have to take and look at the opportunities of what's best for them financially. Selling the property or rebuilding it, and what's the value of that? So there's going to be a lot of speculation and, and comparable values, and you know, what is the nuts and bolts of it? Because when you lose your house, you want to say, hey, what's it going to cost me to rebuild? Did I love it? Did I love the floor plan? Do I love the location? All these things come into play. And then what am I going to get from insurance? And what is the sell of the lot going to be? I think that lot value, again, is going to fluctuate. In my humble opinion, I believe it's going to be pretty aggressive in the beginning and then settle down. So if you are absolutely sure you want to sell, in my opinion, if you ask me straight, I would say sell sooner than later because later the market could get flooded with 10 or 20%. I don't believe it's going to be that high, by the way, because even though the loss was such a, a great magnitude for Reading, in comparison to Sonoma County being 6,000 houses, it's about 10% of that, 10 to 15% of that. I don't expect to have a mass exodus. Sonoma County also had another incredible factor, affordability. Affordability was a huge determining factor in those 25% plus lots coming on the market. Affordability was ridiculous. And then you, you couple that with construction costs being $300 plus a square foot. It just drove people out of the area, still driving them out of the area. It's really unfortunate. Um, investor activity. 
very common to have investors taking uh, taking advantage of an opportunity, and again, financially so, not not in a in a spiritual or a, a personal way. It's not personal. It's just where there's an opportunity, there's an investor. Investors are going to come in and want to buy up these lots, speculating that the lots will increase in value and or speculating that they could rebuild. Um, Sonoma County had no place to build, so the, the infill was all, all you could really build. There was no new developments, really. So investors being able to buy lots in prime areas were very prime. Um, that may not be the case in Reading. depends on the areas. Obviously, you've got... Uh, Sunset Hills, you've got a lot of great areas that people may want to buy a lot to build their home in that they couldn't find a home that they had. So that may help price the investors in, involved. Will prices spike? I, I think absolutely. I think what we're going to see is in the beginning, you know, if we take this little section here, in the beginning, the lot prices are probably going to spike and then they're going to come down and then they'll probably level off. At least this is what we had in Sonoma County. And this was in the first 30 days. This was in the 30 to probably 90 to 120 days, and then things went to normalcy, basically. The issue with the real estate market, and again, um, as a coach, I hear from all over the nation what's going on in the real estate industry, but I'm not trying to be an expert today. I'm just trying to tell you what my opinion is and what I've been understanding. The market for the last three or four months have been slowing down. So as the market was slowing down, the buyers gained a little more power. They were getting a little resistant to the price increases and the interest rates and all these things. So the market cooled over the last three or four months. That is accurate in Reading as well. Sonoma County, most of California saw that. I think that's a pretty safe statement for all of us to agree to. With that being said, we just took out a significant amount of the inventory that was available for sale and or vacant homes and so on, right? So anytime you have a change in inventory, you're probably going to have a spike in real estate. I suspect that you have six to 600 to 1,000 families that have a year to two years to rebuild in the cycle, they're going to be looking to purchase properties, especially the affluent ones, the ones that have a financial ability to do so. I know I would. If my house burned down, let the insurance work, work itself out. I'm going to go buy. 